a lot of us tend to fish the same areas repeatedly throughout the year. And I got an email from a subscriber named Will. He said that he fishes this one channel quite often and he has mixed results. Some days are good, some days are bad. And he wanted to get my opinion on it. So I'm going to take you through a look at the channel that he likes to fish. I'm going to break it down for him and you'll see why some areas in a channel can be good while others not so good. So as usual, I'm going to start off with the view of the satellite and you can see it right here. Uh, this is the channel coming through this direction. You see another fairly good sized channel up here at the top and then you see some creeks off to the right and you see these sedges over on the left, which is a lot of shifting sand. So uh, the, the satellite image here, unless it was taken today, which it wasn't, uh, th that's gonna be different quite often. Um, but you can see a few places in here that are interesting for flounder. Again, they're ambush predators. So you wanna look for places where they're going to be able to ambush the bait fish as they come through the area. So I'm immediately going to look at this area here, uh, this little point in this little creek, uh, this main channel up top here. Uh, as you come around this little island, uh, there's a little bit of a point. You can see though the sand, the way that it lays in this may be a little bit of an issue and it may be a little bit different when you get out there, but worth checking out. And then of course you have this point down here. Um, I'm specifically going to look at this on the outgoing, uh, mostly because that's when the water's coming down in this direction towards the inlet, which is right down at the bottom down here. So uh, let's take a look at the Navionics view and see if we can really zero in on some good spots within this general area. So now let's take a look at the Navionics view, and this is going to give us the contours underneath the water. So it's basically the bottom of the channel. And you can see that there is a lot of opportunity in here. Uh, again, here's that island that I talked about. Here's that one creek off on the right. And there's that uh, bigger channel up here on the top. But he did mention that he fishes here and it's either hit or miss. And you can see a lot of this in here is, is relatively flat and doesn't offer a lot of structure. With an ambush predator, they're looking for structure. And you can see this section right in here is gonna be fairly flat. Uh, you get shallow and, and it stays kind of shallow in a lot of areas. So what you really want to look for are the changes in the bottom contours and look for areas where water flows into water. Um, and again, on the outgoing tide, it'll be coming from this top left direction down towards the bottom right. The inlet again is right down here to the south. So let's take a look at that creek that I talked about. And let me zoom in a little bit on that so you can see it. You can see that there is some structure in this area here. You can see that it goes all the way up to one foot up here, which is extremely shallow for a flounder. You can get them at night gigging back in there um, if it's legal in your state, but you can see it does drop off and it does get deeper up in this section. Now it looks green over here, which typically could indicate that there's land. There's really not land uh, throughout all of that. There is a channel that goes through here. So if I pull it back out a little bit here, you get to see you know, all of this water over here, this little deeper channel comes all the way back into this little bay area. Again, it's shallow, but that water exits uh, on the outgoing. So there's gonna be water flow coming through here. And you can see it drops down to about 22 feet right here. So you have some structures coming off that shallow, a lot of water pouring out. Great spot for a, a flounder to sit and wait for bait to get swept around that corner and down this point. And look at these ledges here in close to these side banks. I would be tossing up in this area, drifting down this way, and trying to, to really cover that structure right there. You also have a little bit of structure here in the middle. You can see over here on the left, it goes up to six feet, and again, down to 22 feet over here. So while it's not a very short, uh, dramatic drop, it does go from very shallow to deep, and you can see it's, it gets much quicker uh, descend in depth in this section here. So I would also maybe fish that on the outgoing, take the current from the top and bring it down to the right. So let's bring it up here a little bit. And you have a really decent look right here. Right up here at the top again is going to be that uh, little creek coming out at the top. You can see five to six foot down to 13 foot, 12 foot down here. This bank right here would probably be good as the water is swept around that corner and down along this bank. So I would test that out there. You also get a little point right here, which might be worth taking a look at uh, where it goes from seven uh, down into this little hole right here. And here is one of perhaps the best spots that I would try. Look up here in the top left, right under where it says map, you can see it's 21 feet. You can see all of these lines really close together. Uh, that means that there's a very uh, steep drop off. It's very shallow up here on the, the left. 
and then up towards the when you go up towards the right it goes down to the 18 feet now it's kind of flat in there 21 to 18 feet is not that big of a change so I wouldn't drift the middle of this channel but I would go right along that edge and really test the boundaries of where that boat can go and, and drift it right down until you get down towards this island you can see a really nice pocket down here I would absolutely fish that and then right around the corner you get a little bit of a hole over here at 13 feet but take the drift from the top left down to the bottom right now on the incoming for all of these spots you try to reverse these it might be difficult um, so it's not really setting up great on an incoming uh, for easy fishing but if you're if you have a trolling motor uh, if you want to anchor up and, and toss um, if you just want to work those engines a little bit on the boat I would try to just do this in reverse for all of these spots you should be much better off in those locations but if we pull this back out for a wider view in this area again uh, good reasons why this is hit or miss you have really flat areas up in this channel up here and, and it's not going to be the best for producing those big fish you may get a lot of smaller fish uh, but you may get a lot of smaller fish but you're not going to necessarily get the bigger fish that you're really looking for so again here and here and the best one is right over here right on top of this island drift this back from the left to the right you should be able to pick up some nice fish so now that you've seen this video i'd like you to check out on the screen the two videos popping up actually the first is a video on how to find inshore spots on your own so click that if you want to see the tools that i use so that you can do it on your own and by the way those tools are free and then a playlist which will show catch video along with analysis just like you've seen in this that goes through last season's flounder fishing for me. And again, hit like, subscribe, and get notified if you'd like to see more of these videos in the future. And this video that you're seeing right now is a flounder caught in that general vicinity, but not exactly in that channel.